Well, I think, again, that it doesn't give sufficient flexibility to the local jurisdictions. If you ask a lot of police chiefs throughout the city, non-political police chiefs, career police, law enforcement officers, do they need some flexibility, you know, in terms of working with or when flexibility in deciding when they will give someone over to ICE? I think they'll all tell you absolutely. And I would be concerned about any bill that strips them of that flexibility. I think an interesting thing on the mandatory minimum, though, that no one's paying attention to is how many people apprehended at the border actually have a prior immigration history, have been previously apprehended um, uh, by the Border Patrol. And to the extent you pose a mandatory minimum on, on uh, those individuals, you're, you're going to fill up the federal prisons pretty quick um, you know, with, with huge numbers of individuals. And they have to at some point. They have to at some point. I think there's, there's widespread support on both, on both parties. You know, both the Republicans and Democrats support it. I, I think that there is definitely a chance. I mean, look, we have 11.5 million people in this country. Um, you know, 56% of them have been here 15 years. Like 86% of them have now been here 10 years. These people are deeply woven into the fabric of the country. Um, and despite all the political rhetoric about deporting them, it's, it's not possible. It's not possible consistent with the Constitution. You know, the, it would just take billions of dollars and years, you know, hundreds or if not thousands of new immigration judges. Um, and it would just be ripping people apart who are, you know, have U.S. citizens, children and family members and spouses who go to church in this country and work in this country and are deeply wedded in the fabric of this country. It's not going to happen. It's time that we resolve this issue once and for all, you know. And moreover, you have U.S. employers screaming for reforms to, so they can hire more you know, high-skilled people. You have both Republicans and Democrats pointing out the absurdities of bringing in foreign students, training them in science, you know, engineering and math, and then kicking them out of the United States with no real path to come here. You have entrepreneurs founding companies but can't get immigration status. The timing is everything. Honestly, the, there's a very limited window. You have to, rem again, the logistical um, hurdles of processing four million applications, it takes, it takes some time um, and to do it right and do the quality of job that I know they want to do. And so how, really the decision of when this program, if this program is greenlit is obviously critical. But if, if it is greenlit, the question then becomes when. Um, but it, it's quite possible this is something that the actual realization of this program could very well hinge on the, the outcome of the election in November. Well, I mean, certainly if you look at Mr. Trump's plan and you look at the things that Trump has said, I mean, I, frankly, the Trump plan would probably compromise border security more than it would help it. Uh, it would divert resources that could be much better spent. And I think if you ask Border Patrol officers and agents, they'd tell you that, hey, we don't need a giant wall the entirety of the border. There's, a, there's some technology we could use, though, um, you know, and there's probably some, uh, you know, air assets we could use and frankly some funding for overtime operations and fuel, basic things like that that would be much more important than walls. Um, you know, I think if you look at the Republican side, though, it's very clear that they, you know, they put, you know, the ones who are the most moderate are throwing out the border first kind of rhetoric. Well, I think the border force rhetoric really is just, um, you know, uh, code for, uh, you know, the, you know, we're not interested in passing any sort of immigration reform. Uh, that said, I, to be fair, though, I think I do think that uh, I think that Bush and I think to a certain extent Rubio certainly voted for the, the Senate bill. I think that they'd be interested in trying to find a compromise should they be elected president. Um, but certainly the rhetoric right now doesn't seem to be, um, you know, they're playing, they're catering to their base a little bit. Not to the extent that a Ted Cruz or a Trump are, but 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 certainly they're catering to their base.